Hey everybody, Arthur here with another unboxing video. Today we have two boxes I'm opening from Mark II Designs from the Mark2Toys.com website. We have Weapon Set A and Weapon Set B. And they come in a white box with a really cool image, like a blueprint weapon schematic image on the front. Nice, clean, and simple. I dig it. And if you guys aren't familiar with Mark II Designs, I had him as a guest on my State of the Art episode. So if you guys want to check out that interview between me and Mark, go check that out. But let's go ahead and get these weapons out of the box. When it comes to these sets, they do come with collector-friendly packaging where, you know, it has a little plastic cover. The guns can be removed out of the trays and you can put them back when you're done and put them back in the box. Now, the first gun that I grabbed out of set A was the Mac 11 with the extended magazine. It looks awesome. All the guns are in this gray plastic, and they are nice, hard plastic. So you don't have to worry about these things warping or bending, but they're really detailed. Um, that's something that Mark takes pride in, is making sure his guns are accurate. The magazines are not removable, and there's no muzzle flash holes. I asked him about that, and he said with removable magazines and things like that, it actually doesn't scale the gun right because you have to actually make the handles bigger and all this stuff it's just he wants the stuff to be as accurate as possible and uh, this thing looks great and even though it doesn't have a muzzle flash if you're collecting action force which are other weapons that he designs um, the muzzle flash from the action force sets pops right onto the barrels looking really nice Continuing with these submachine guns, and I don't know all the names of these guns. I'll do my best. I, I do believe this is a Uzi. Um, again, lots of details that's in here. Hard plastic, extended stock. We even got the extended mag there. Again, nice gray plastic because you can either keep them this gray or you could just paint them yourself, which is a nice thing about having these types of guns. Muzzle flash fits... A little bit loose on this one, so you could use some sticky tack, but you can see it still works. Still continuing with the submachine guns, we get ourselves a vector, and the detail on this is phenomenal. This is a beautiful gun. One of my friend's favorite submachine gun that he uses pretty much in uh, Call of Duty. It's got the stock on there looking really good, and then it's got uh, a unique barrel, so if you're going to get the... Balaverse attachment, you're going to use a little bit of sticky tack. I'm overly using sticky tack just to give you an example. But yeah, you can get your muzzle flashes that are from either Action Force, Super Action stuff, anything like that. Use a little sticky tack and it'll work. Now, I used a lot of sticky tack, but still, sticky tack is your friend, especially for figure photography and things like that. Um, but it looks freaking badass. Here we got one of the uh, battle rifles, I would assume, or assault rifles. Again, with the nice detail on there. The gray plastic. And then the barrel is a very long, skinny barrel. Muzzle flash definitely works on it. Diving into the assault rifles here. This one, again, looking very nice. I love the detail in it. And a lot of these guns, when you're seeing these, you're probably like, these look familiar. It's probably because you've seen them in a lot of your games. You play PUBG, you play Call of Duty, um, or you served in the military. A lot of these things, the, these are all based off of real weapons. And uh, they look awesome. This barrel has a unique muzzle in the front. So you're going to have to use a little sticky tack for the effect piece. And, of course, you'll probably do a better and less tack. But still, you get, you get the gist. You get the gist. These are awesome-looking guns. My favorite assault rifle from set A is this M4. It's got the front grip, got the optics. It's just a well-done gun. It's got sculpted detail in the muzzle. And you can get the muzzle flash... From Valiverse to fit on there. It's a little snug. You gotta sort of work at it a little bit to get it to stay on. You might use some sticky tack, but uh you can see that it looks it just looks awesome. Here we have an M16 looking assault rifle with the shotgun attachment on the underbarrel. And this thing just looks nasty. I don't believe I have a another weapon that has the underbarrel of a shotgun like this, and this just looks nasty. Now, finishing off set A, we got ourselves a nice-looking shotgun. It's even got the, like, release to extend the stock right there. Doesn't move, but it's still cool, the attention to detail that he captured into this. We even got a attachment on the bottom for the pump, but it looks like it has 
a like a flashlight attachment at the bottom. Can never have too many cool looking shotguns. Starting with set B, we get ourselves a little micro Uzi. Looking really cool with that stock. And then the muzzle flash for the Valiverse. Action Force figures do fit over there, making this just look even more gnarly. We get another submachine gun right here, looking pretty cool. And uh, again, the, like the muzzle on this one has a sculpted out, flared out muzzle. And so you're going to use some sticky tack to get that muzzle flash to work on this. Here we get the M16, looking like an M16. And it doesn't bother me that the magazines don't come out because I feel like we already have so many different guns that have removable magazines. You don't really need all of them to have removable magazines, um, especially when it could affect the detail and accuracy. But this is a very, very solid M16. And if the previous M16 wasn't enough, we get a second one with a collapsible stock design and we got a bayonet on the front, so a different style of the M16. Then we get this type of gun and this is a Arthur Don't Know. I, I don't know what this is. I, I think I've seen it before, but I don't know what this is. What type of gun? Um, I'm sure somebody in the comments will definitely tell me. I, I don't know what this is. Then we get another little, looks like a submachine gun, could be assault rifle, but definitely looks like a gun that we got back in the day with one of our OG G.I. Joes, and uh, this thing looks great. Now, my favorite gun from Weapon Set B is the AK that it comes with. This thing is gorgeous, and I was telling Mark, I was like, man, we need like just sets of these so I can equip up my Cobra Troopers, and uh, they're just this is just a gorgeous, gorgeous piece. Now, you know if Mark's going to be giving us shotguns with set A, we're going to get some shotguns with set B. We got ourselves the Spaz, and this thing just looks gnarly. This thing looks awesome. But let's go ahead and get some of these weapons equipped in some figures' hands so we can take a look at them. Mark killed it with these sets. Like, all the guns are different guns, which is a huge bonus. And another thing about them is they're made out of hard plastic. They're in a nice gray that you can either paint or you can not paint. It's, it's really up to you. If you're a customizer, you can definitely customize the heck out of these with some paint. If you don't, like me, I'm just going to keep them gray. And they, they just look awesome. They look great. They're designed for your 112 skill figures. So your classified, black series... Action Force, Mezcos, I can go on. Anything in that 112 scale should hold these fine. And if they have trigger fingers, it's even going to be better. So you can get them into that trigger area. And uh, it's just a beautiful, beautiful set of guns. Both of them are. And one of my favorite things about this, and I think Mark did this on purpose as he's designing these. I'm sure he's being meticulous about them. But the stock. If you look at the M4, there's a little bit of gap, but that's because, you know, there's a little bit of poofiness in the body armor and stuff. And I'm not really pushing it up snug into his bicep. But it's nice to have a gap. I have other guns that have like the stocks and stuff and they look really good. But the stock is too overly extended that when the plastic is trying to get nestled up into the little area... It's plastic against plastic, and there's resistance, and it just it's just extended too far. So I love the fact that I could get this one aimed up, and he could be aiming down the optics and not have any issues of worrying about that stock snapping off. But these sets of weapons are phenomenal. If you guys are looking for a more variety of weapons for your 112 skill figures, these are definitely it. He's the best in the business when it comes to accuracy and designs of weaponry. So I'm going to link all his information down below. Mark Two Toys is going to be down below. So go check him out on his website and check him out on Instagram because he has a new set of guns that's coming down. And he has, a, he has a lot of stuff in the works and they're going to be phenomenal. So definitely show some love, check him out. And that sums up my unboxing and review of Mark Two Toys weapon set a and weapon set b if you guys are enjoying my content hit that like button if you're new to my channel hit that subscribe button it helps the channel evolve and grow make sure you guys hit the silver bell notification so you know when i'm posting up a new video and when i go live on state of the arts so you guys can tune in chat it up and have a good time as i talk figures and have guests and all that good stuff but most importantly i want you guys to have the best luck hunting keep on collecting and have a beautiful day